we'll we'll pretend this pretend that this is a saddle pad, but, uh, but in in real life you'd uh, you you normally use a saddle pad that's made out of wool, and, and uh, so that's you know wool uh, raw wool uh, saddle pad is is, uh, is really probably the best. And, and, uh, so anyway, when you when you put the saddle pad on, you you put it on the. Uh, Towards the front of the animal, and, and the, maybe I should mention before you'd even do that, you'd, you'd, you'd maybe you'd brush the animal and you go over, make sure there's no sticks or little pieces of mud or whatever that can you know, work into the height as you're going down the trail and, and cause a sore. And so you want to be you know, real careful that you know, there's nothing like that on the animal. And, and the, the hairs, you know, all face this direction, you know, pointing towards the back. And, and so we also want to make sure that we don't have any hair sticking up and in, into the into the saddle pad, because because that you know that will will uh, cause a sore too. And and so to to prevent that, we'll we'll put the saddle pad towards a towards the front of the animal like that, and then we'll you know and then we'll work it back. And then, and then we'll put the put the upper hole on. And maybe maybe work work it back a little bit more, and uh, work, work the upper rail back a little bit more too. So so uh, you know and the upper rail is is kind of a center fire rig, I guess what you call center fire rig. So so you know lots of times or most of most of us in the more modern cultures we're not used to center fire rigs. We're used to the sitch coming here, but. But the aparejo would actually come more right towards the the, uh, the center, the middle of the belly of the animal. And then in, in some ways, that's that's uh, probably easier on the animal because you don't have so much motion here. And, and uh, uh, so like when the horse is walking down the trail, this the the skin here is pretty thin too. And then and just because of the motion, you'll get a lot of friction right here. And, uh, and then. Stitching up the animal tight, it's not gonna, it's not gonna bother them as much because there's a lot more flexibility here than, than there is here. Mm -hmm. you know, so you can take an animal and stitch it pretty tight, and there's, there's more flexibility here. Mm -hmm. and then, and then we'll take the. With animals, it's you know, equine type animals. You, uh, you know, got to be careful you don't get kicked, and and uh, so so if you're you know, bending over like this, uh, you don't want to get your head down in, uh, in the, within the range where where you get kicked in the head or something like that. Mm -hmm. This this spa has a little probably a little bit shorter than we would ideally want for this particular animal. And so we can tie it with a with a slip knot either either here or up here and then it would uh, usually tie it with a you know with a slip knot if you can there's not quite enough there but maybe I'll tie it down below so they can show it a little bit more easily so. string and then uh, and the reason for that is that if you get into a wreck uh, and you want to get the pack off the animal you can, 
you can, uh, with a slip knot, you can uh, get it removed a lot, a lot easier. What is that piece called again, John? You got you to speak up a bit. What is this piece called again, John, that you just put on there? What is it called? What, is it, what this is called? Yeah. yeah this is called the Faha. Faha. Yeah, the Faha Aparejo. And, or, and then which, uh, which literally means, means, uh, means sash. And so... You don't call this a this a cinch or a cinch, and I guess presumably because it goes all the way around, uh, you call it a call it a fire rather than a cinch or cinch or you'd say it's Spanish. Well, I'll be the system if anybody wants to clean the load. Or... How do you do it, John? Put it on top or what? I'll be the assistant. You show me what to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is uh, the, uh, you know, the the rope that we'll use, use as a cling rope. And uh, so I'll just take the center of it and uh, I'll put it on the top. And, and then I'll, I'll lay my pack on, on top of this. And then and then take, take the ends and then just, just throw them over here. Okay. Then you could just, just let those ends hang down. Um, now we're going to bring it back up over the load? No? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. And then, and then you take, uh, take one of your... Just one? You just, just one. Mm -hmm. And then put that through the loop. The, okay, now you just have to tie those two together and you got it. Here, John, you do it for me. So then you tie it. So you see that way, where that goes, I just, just went through that. Through that bite there. Uh -huh. now, now, now all you have to now all you have to do is tie these two ends together, and you got your load slung. Just a neon knot. Yeah, just a regular square knot. And, you know, or a square knot with a slip, you know, slip to square knot. So it makes it easier to get undone. Okay, so now we'll, we'll put our pop pack on and get it run that out face face that in the Front of the bunt up underneath the underneath the bags or the box or whatever. How far does they have inside? And then you want to throw the diamond?
Okay, I'll take a take a leap like that, and then I'll slip it underneath there. And this will be the, be the corner of our diamond over there. You take that and, and then go around and hook it on the on the, uh, the front corner of the apparejo, and that around the back corner. And then I'll take it to go around around that corner. On this corner, and then tie it off on the top. And then maybe uh, try to get our loop secured so it's not sticking up and catching on a snag or something.